This man won two Super Bowls, and now he's in the Monday Night Football booth, and it's going to be a lot of memory lane tonight because this is the NFL 100 Game of the Week. Each week, the NFL is designated an NFL 100 Game of the Week for its historical significance, and this is a rematch of the same teams that played in the very first Monday Night Football game on September 20th, 1970, and on Monday, September 16th, 2019, big game between the Browns and the Jets, so Booger McFarland kind enough to call into the Rich Eisen Show, I believe, for the first time. How you doing, Booger? I'm doing great, Rich. This is the first time. I appreciate you having me, and hopefully it's not the last yeah, time. Buddy. I will not. <laughs> it will not be. I am, um, I, I, I've got uh, a napkin tucked into my shirt and a fork and a knife for this piece of filet mignon tonight, Booger. Um, how in the world do you think can the Jets pull this one off with Sam Darnold at home quarantined? Well, I think they're going to have to slow the tempo of the game down. I think Cleveland is a fast-paced offense, as we saw last week against Tennessee. They took the opening drive down the field. They scored, and all was well. And then, quote-unquote, all hell broke loose because they started committing penalties. Late in the fourth quarter, Baker was pressing. They turned the football over. Uh, I think if you're a Jets fan, and you got to have confidence that Trevor Simeon went back and watched the tape of Sam Donald. Sam Donald didn't play well last week, Rich, and I think uh, – Simeon being a veteran quarterback, he started 24 games. I think the moment won't be too big for him. He's got Le'Veon Bell. Demarius Thomas comes over via trade from uh, the New England Patriots. Jamison Crowder played well last week. So he's got some weapons. I think the big thing for him is just to try to let the game come to him and try to slow the tempo of the game down. Run Le'Veon early. Um, not, not necessarily milk the clock, but don't be in a hurry because you want this Browns offense to kind of feel like they're pressing a little bit. And how you do that is you keep them on the sideline. Well, and then you obviously have C.J. Mosley out for the Jets as well with Quinn and Williams and this offense from the Browns coming at you. What went wrong for the Browns and all the film that you've watched against the Titans, Booger? Well, I think the quarterback was pressing a little bit. You know, they can say what they want to say, but you can definitely tell that after the first drive, they thought, man, this is going to be easy this year. Here, here we come. AFC North Super Bowl, first drive of the season. And they want to score every play seemingly. And to me, that's an issue because the National Football League is built on a lot of good players. And I think Baker Mayfield and also Freddie Kitchens, they were pressing a little bit. Instead of calling the slant route or the, or, or the run play, they were trying to get the 15, 20-yard chunk pass every time. And Tennessee just kind of dropped back and played cover two and kept everything in front of them and didn't allow too many big plays. And they became impatient. But the bottom line is that their offensive line also was, was terrible. I, I thought Chris Hubbard, the right tackle, who went to left tackle, when Robinson got kicked out, uh, he may have, I mean, he may have played the worst offensive line that I've ever seen, and they got to get that short up. Uh, Freddie told us yesterday that he's looking forward to the game tonight because he wants to find out what his team is made of. He's got a young football team that's very, very talented, and when you have young players, you have an idea of how they're going to react and perform, but you just don't know, especially on Monday Night Football with all the bells and whistles that come with that. I think we're going to find out whether or not this young team can handle the expectations on a big stage in New York. It's going to be a fun night tonight. Well, 18 penalties, Booger, also didn't help. And you mentioned Greg Robinson getting kicked out of a game. I mean, a left tackle getting kicked out of a game because he kicked Kenny Vaccaro in the head. And and the loss of composure that we saw from time to time was alarming. And now here comes, as you mentioned, Monday Night Football MetLife Stadium, and Odell has already been out there talking about Greg Williams and Greg Williams returning fire. How much do you think that's going to play into tonight's game? Well, I think it'll be good for us. You know, we can watch TV. We'll have something juicy and scintillating to talk about. No, but I'm just uh, talking about what, what Greg might do to dial it up or the players in Odell's face trying to trigger him or Odell trying not to be triggered. I mean, that that's the sort of stuff. I, I, I'm fully well, aware you guys are definitely going to be talking about this, as well, rightfully so. Right. I, I think, you know, obviously I think the players are going to bring it up. That's what players do on the field. Some talk, some don't, whatever your prerogative is. I don't know if Greg can dial it up the way that we're used to Greg Williams doing that because the cornerbacks for the Jets, uh, Roberts and Tremaine Johnson, didn't play well either. Uh, and so if you're Greg, do you really want to leave your corners on the island one-on-one when they didn't play well against the Buffalo Bills, who I probably can't even name one of their receivers, and now you're going up against OBJ, and Jarvis Landry and David Njoku and, and Nick Chubb, like the weapons that you're going to see tonight are going to be two times the weapons you saw against Tennessee, or excuse me, against Buffalo, and they didn't play well against Buffalo. So uh, I think Greg is going to try to play to the running game and try to keep this game close. If, if 
if you're a Jets fan and it's the end of the first quarter and it's 7-3 or it's 10-7 or it's 10-3, you got to feel pretty good. What you do not want is at the end of the first quarter, this game is 14 nothing because that means that that yes. offense is high flying and now Miles Garrett and Olivier Vernon and Sheldon Richardson can get out to Trevor Simeon, which is what you do not want. Booger McFarland from uh, Monday Night Football here on the Rich Eisen Show. How quickly are we going to see uh, Odell's watch on your broadcast tonight, do you think, Booger? You know, man, I, I, I think it's going to be at some point early on. Uh, Jay Rothman, <laughs> our producer, does a great job. You know, I kind of stay in my lane. I, things that I need to know, I know. Things that I don't, I really don't worry about. So uh, I'm sure he'll put it on the screen at some point, especially if Odell has a big catch early. I mean, that's part of the storylines. We got Lisa Saltis, who does a great job, and I'm sure she'll have something on it. But, I mean, you know how this goes, Rich. I mean, it's a national broadcast. We're going to introduce people to the big topics of the last week involving these two teams, and that definitely has been one. Why is that one, do you think? Do you think it's because of Odell or just it's the how expensive the watch is, or do we – do we get bored as a national media talking about stuff between Monday and Wednesday? How big of a, of a deal do you think this really is, Booger? Well, I don't think it's a big deal at all. Uh, I, I think anytime Odell Beckham, who is box office, he is a star. Anytime he says something, does something that is in, in, in any way, shape, or form considered controversial, we're going to jump all over because that's going to get people to pay attention. Um, as long as it's legal by NFL rules, I could care less. If it's if it's illegal, then okay, you got to take it off and let's move on. And and I think people are enamored because of this, Rich. How many people would wear a, a on a two hundred thousand dollar watch, and then B would you wear it during a game or during a battle or a competition? And so you know, I think there's a portion of America that just doesn't understand that mindset because they've never been in it, they've never owned that kind of watch, nor if they were able to own it, would they put that watch in competition? Hmm. So I think all those things factor in. But Odell is coming back to New York. Whatever he says or does this week was going to be a big story. So the watch just fits right in. Well, the big news of the day going in is Ben Roethlisberger being done for the year. Obviously, the Browns need a win tonight to stay within hailing distance of the Ravens just two weeks in. Um, Do you think this ends the Steelers' season? Question one on this, Booger. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, I like Mason Rudolph. I don't love him. You know, the Steelers were always going to have to be an offensive team uh, because their, their, their defense is kind of still getting used to playing, uh, you know, with Devin Bush at the middle line, but at the spot. And, you know, the secondary has been an issue for a couple of years. They gave up 300 yards to Russell Wilson yesterday. So uh, they were going to have to outscore people. Now that becomes a lot more difficult. Not that Mason Rudolph is not capable, but he just doesn't have the moxie nor the experience that Ben Roethlisberger does. So, uh, I, I don't want to say that season is over because Mike Tomlin, I, I, I think when you talk about the handful of coaches that are among the elite in the National Football League, he's right up there. And I know some people don't like that, but his track record is proven. Uh, and I have faith in Mike Tomlin. Uh, he's going to rally the troops. They're going to have to figure out a different way to play. But it's going to be very difficult for them to compete with the likes of Kansas City uh, in New England now that their uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback is no longer available. Well, I'm with you, too, on Tomlin. Uh, I mean, the number of people that think that he um, should eat it based on the fact that Brown and Bell are not there anymore, that he didn't make it all work. And I'm like, there was an iceberg. We only saw the tip of it. I, 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 I'm just not here for all the Tomlin hate, Booger, flat out. Oh, I mean, I agree with you. I, I don't understand um, – the amount of people around America that when they mention Bill Belichick and then you start to think about who's the next winningest coach um, in the National Football League over the last several years, who's the guy that's never had a losing season, they don't mention Mike Tomlin. But, like, those are his credentials. And I, I just think that he deserves a, a, a little bit more respect, uh, not from just national media, but from the people who actually, quote-unquote, know this game he, he just doesn't get his just due, and, and to me, that's not right. But he'll never say it. Like, I know Mike personally. Uh, he was on our staff in Tampa, and, and, you know, I watched him go from position coach to defensive coordinator to now one of the longest tenure head coaches in the National Football League, and everything he's gotten, he's earned because of what he's done on the football field. And so I, I just don't get that, that narrative around the country. Well, the first uh, hour uh, uh, after Big Ben's retirement and the first blush narrative, I mean, not retirement, uh, uh, injury, uh, and first blush narrative was involving retirement about Big Ben, that this could be it. You know, Knowing him as you do or covering him as you have and knowing what people uh, think of Big Ben as well, do you think that he is – that this could be it? He's having Tommy John surgery, it appears here, Booger. 
Um, as long as physically he's capable of playing, I fully expect him to come back. And I think with the advances in medicine, you know, you see guys coming back in baseball that are throwing harder um, after they've had the Tommy John surgery than when they were before. So I fully expect the medical part to be there. Uh, ben Roethlisberger is a competitor. Um, regardless of what he says and the attention that he tries to get, he's always a guy that's showing up and, and played. And I, I think that as long as the medical piece checks out, I fully expect him to be, uh, to be back next year. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get the dog and pony show because Ben likes attention now. Ben loves his attention. So he may say a comment and get people to thinking he's going to retire. But I, I think come next July, Ben Roethlisberger will be in Latrobe and he'll be in Steelers camp. Okay. Ask the poll question to Booger McFarlane, Chris Brockman, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Go for it. Hey, Booger, which 2-0 and team is the most surprising to you, 49ers, Bills, Packers, Seahawks? got to be the Bills, right? I, I mean, I, I, for me, the 49ers were my sleeper team. I think they're going to be dynamite, especially when Jimmy G settles in. Uh, the Packers, um, for as much, uh, for as many headlines as we made about Audible Gate and whether or not Aaron Rodgers can audible or not, I mean, it's their defense that's, that's really playing well. Uh, their defense held Minnesota to 16 points. Now, I realize Kirk Cousins helped them out with some, some terrible decision-making in and down by the goal line. Uh, but how could it not be the Bills? Because they're, they're stuck up there, way in New York, almost in Canada. Nobody thinks about Coach Sean McDermott. Josh Allen, he's just an athlete playing quarterback. Um, what do we really know about them? Well, right now we know that they're, they're a good football team. They're playing uh, with good fundamentals. They're 2-0. and The quarterback is making plays within himself. He's not trying to be Breeze or Brady. He's using his legs. He's running around. And so I, I think right now you got to feel really good about it. Now, do I expect the Bills to be there in the end? No. Can they compete uh, if they're clicking on all cylinders with Kansas City and New England? No. But I'll tell you what, 2-0 oh, sure feels a hell of a lot better than 0-2 at this time. I know that. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, you know, Breeze, you mentioned him. Uh, we, we've got Teddy Bridgewater for the next six weeks. Where do you place the Saints once, uh, once Breeze does, in fact, as expected, return? Rich, I think you know this. When you have a capable backup, you're really hoping for that guy to keep you at 500, to keep you afloat. And if Bridgewater can keep him, you know, if he's gone six weeks, if he can keep the Saints at three and three, even two and four, what they can't do is just lose every game. Because I think when Drew Brees comes back, we all around the country have the Saints pegged as a Super Bowl contender, one of the high contenders in the NFC and throughout the league. And as long as Brees comes back healthy, and the defense is still pretty much healthy. Uh, Cam Jordan, Demario Davis is one of the more underrated linebackers in football. Number 56, watch him. He's fun to watch. I think the Saints are going to be right there in the end because of the division that they play in. Jameis Winston doesn't scare you. Cam Newton looks like a shell of himself. Matt Ryan, I, I, I swear he was colorblind last night. I didn't, I didn't know who he was throwing the football to other than Julio Jones and other players. So that division is going to keep the Saints, I think, in it regardless of who's quarterbacking for them over the next six weeks. And then last one for you, we didn't include the Ravens in the surprising 2-0 and teams because they won the division last year, but right. the conversation that I hear, even though I am I'm I was in July aboard the Ravens and Lamar Jackson train, well, he did it against the tanking Dolphins team. Well, the team that was first on the clock was playing their first road game with their rookie quarterback. Uh, how real are the Ravens in your mind, Booger? Well, I think the Ravens understand who they are. They have a really good defense. They have a quarterback that can use his legs, and he is progressing by leaps and bounds as a passer. I, I was a guy who was really not a Lamar Jackson fan because I think the quarterback position has to be played from within the pocket, distributing the football to your playmakers. I've been around football for a long time, Rich. I've never seen a running quarterback last a long time, and I've seen some great ones, Michael Vick, RG3. They just don't last. So far, Lamar Jackson has proven he can keep his, his body in the pocket and throw the football. Now, I realize he rushed for 120 some yards yesterday. He didn't, I don't think he only rushed for three yards the first game. So he's trying to pick and choose when he goes. As long as he does that, they can sustain this formula. What he cannot do is revert back to what he did at the end of last year. And, and, and I hope he doesn't because it, it's, a, uh, it's a pleasure to see the progression. You know, you often hear the old saying, guys get better from year one to year two. Like, this kid has really gotten better. This is not the same kid that we saw complete three passes against the Chargers in the playoff game, and we were like, y'all sure y'all want to get rid of Flacco? Now, all of a sudden, I mean, people are saying 
Lamar Jackson, and they're mentioning three letters that I thought we never mentioned, and that's MVP. So it, it's been fun to see. The defense is really, really good. John Harbaugh is an underrated coach, just like Mike Tomlin, former special teams coach. He does a phenomenal job. And you got to give a shout-out to Ozzie Newsom for moving back in the first round and drafting Lamar Jackson. Even when he knew he was on the way out, he still took the best player available and set the franchise up for this success. So I think everybody deserves a little credit. The mother of all farewell gifts from Ozzie Newsom as he's walking out the door. Well, 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 well pointed out, Booger. I look forward to tonight's broadcast. I will be watching and uh, look forward to the next time calling in. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. I've always admired you, man. You do a hell of a job. And uh, more Thank than you. anything, you make it fun. You keep it real. And I think that's what TV should be, man. So big, big props to you, buddy. Thanks, Booger. Really appreciate it. I look forward to, uh, as I said, the next call. And tonight on Monday Night Football, the NFL 100 game of the week, the Browns and the Jets in honor of the 50th anniversary. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.